This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. You know, we told you so, and it came true yet again. 4 p.m. on Wednesday, our flagship show, Energy Policy Forum. Um, and it's all about Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We talk about every aspect of that. Sharon Moriwaki, my, my co-host and co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Uh, thank you for being here, Sharon, as always. Thank you for having this show. Okay. Aloha. We, we, have, uh, we have Joelle Simone Pietri. Uh, she's a big cheese with biofuel these days. We're going to talk more about that. She's also a, a commander in the United States Navy. Am I right about that? Reserve. 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 Okay. All right. I mean, to me, it's all the same. Okay. <laughs> but don't give any orders around here, okay? We're all, we're all on the egalitarian level. I wouldn't dream of it with you around, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> and Carl Campania, who seems to be a nice guy, but we have very little data about that. <laughs> oh, honestly, Carl was a host here for mm, a long time, and uh, he's very familiar with um, this kind of show and with Think Tech, and we like to have his smiling face around all the time. Thanks for being here, Carl. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you, so you guys want to talk about biofuel and the bioeconomy. Lots of things have been happening, so let's roll it out and try to familiarize our listening, viewing audience with what has been happening in biofuel. Joelle, you're first. What about this event that you had only, what? January 16th. Yep. What about that? What was that? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. So it was uh, technically the third annual Bioeconomy Hawaii Forum. And uh, we've got some uh, graphics that we can show of what uh, the different presenters. But it was an all-day thing. Sharon helped to co-sponsor it. We had uh, several of the Energy Policy Forum staff actually help with a lot of the logistics, which is great. Uh, and Carl was one of my co-chairs. So, And then we had two other co-chairs. So. Okay. Um, All right, hint, we, hint, this is the time we're going to show the slides. <laughs> Watch this, bingo, slide. It's there, I know it's there. Ah. Ah, so, so you give us a running description. So um, the Bioeconomy Hawaii Forum was to bring together industry practitioners as well as federal, state, and local government representatives and nonprofits focused on the integration this year, the integration between food, fuel, and waste reuse. That is basically the bioeconomy. So one of our presenters was Hawaii Gas, and here's a picture of their newest project, which is actually to recapture biogas that's being generated at the wastewater treatment plant. This is not Honolulu. LNG. This is not fossil fuel. This, this is, is not biogas. This is the bio version of LNG. Wow. So yes, things it, are evolving yes. at Hawaii Gas. It's actually natural in the na liquefied natural, natural gas. Real natural yeah. gas. Yeah. So this wastewater treatment plant in Honolulu has actually been flaring its biogas for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, all Hawaii Gas is uh, doing is going to be bottling it and actually um, selling it to their customers through their pipeline, which required a two-year docket with the Public Utilities Commission to get permission to do that. Did they have permission? They received permission last uh, in December. Oh, that's a big deal. Yes. So I'm a gas deal. customer. Yes. It's not just that I have gas, but I actually use gas. <laughs> I'm sure you have it coming you, and going. You consume it. Coming and going. Yes. <laughs> and I like gas, by the way. <laughs> I'm not going to get any more familiar with it than that. Um, that means when I, when I take the gas in, when, I, when they uh, supply me with gas, it's going to include this biofuel gas, right? It will include some biogas in it. And you're actually going to have Rich DeGarmo from Hawaii Gas come and give a deep dive on this specific project on the 28th. So look for this show on the 28th of February. Okay, let's look at that and now. you'll get a deep dive from Rich DeGarmo. So and, one of the... And we're going to see more of Yeah, now. next, uh, pull this. up the next ah. picture. So <laughs> this, and if you go to the next one, this is the Oceanic Institute's brand spanking new feed mill in Hilo. This is part of the integrated bioeconomy Where again. is that in Hilo? Where is it in Hilo? Yeah. I think it's actually right next to the Pacific Biodiesel plant because ah, okay, part okay. of the integration is that uh, waste macadamia nuts, for example, uh -huh. or, wa uh -huh. or uh, algae meal go to Pacific Biodiesel to their crushing mill to get the oil extracted, and then the protein meal that's left over goes to the feed mill here and is formulated into actual feed. This is a processing feed. plant. This is a processing plant. So this is what, kind of, what kind of biofuels can it process? This is not processing the biofuels. Remember, this is the integrated food and fuel system. So that plant is going to be processing the meal left over after the biofuels are extracted to actually make aquaculture and cattle feed. So what do you, what, okay, so it's yeah. a big machine mm -hmm. and it, it comes out, there's an output there and one of the outputs is uh, uh, bio, bio, I could drink it, bio, bio material. 
The crushing mill I'm not showing because Pacific Biodiesel has already shown that on a few other shows. This is the feed mill. This is to actually take the protein meal left over after the oil extraction. Okay. The protein meal that's oh, left okay, from it. macadamia this nuts. This is not creating biofuel. This is dealing with the, 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 the meal yeah. that comes out of the processing of yes. biofuel. What makes the biofuel lower in cost is being able to do higher value yeah, added products from the commercial transaction. primary products. Yeah. The primary product is the animal Got feed. Yeah. Then the leftover, the waste, is what you make the biofuel out of. Right. So, so you, have, you have to factor that in when you talk about the cost of creating a gallon of biofuel, right? You use the value-added products to buy down the cost of biofuel. And I have another fantastic graphic that actually shows some of that strategy. I, I feel it's coming um, now. Watch yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> Not just yet, but oh, oh. We'll pull up the next it's one. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, there it is. No. Okay. And uh, so that's the, the feed mill again. That. Next one after that. So this is uh, an example of the forestry plantation. There are several of these on the Big Island as well as Kauai. And so eucalyptus stands like these are what some of our other presenters on the January 16th event talked about. So, you know, some of this is uh, uh, theoretically going to be going to the Huhonua Bioenergy Power Plant, which will be making electricity. So that's part of the bioeconomy, not necessarily are you specific those biofuels. Beautiful trees will be cut down. Those are eucalyptus. They They're were planted. They? they were planted like for the purpose like of being cut down. The there. <laughs> and like if you go to the there. next image, I think the next one um, will be. This is uh, what another one of our presenters from Huiku Plants talked about. This is an overhead image of Heiia on Oahu oh, yeah, back in 1928. Yeah. This is actually what you know before sort of modernized, you know, residential and commercial and industrial you know, changes to the, the watershed, the, um, the ahupua'a on that side of the island, this is actually what he'e'ia looked like under Hawaiian cultivation practices. In 1928. In 1928. So their point, uh, the point that they made, and one of the things that really uh, got everybody excited at the Bioeconomy Hawaii Forum is you harvest the eucalyptus trees and then replant with native and indigenous species that can also become part of the bioeconomy because they also produce food, feed, fiber, fuel, and other value-added products for the modern economy as well. If so. I went and took a picture of that exact location right now today, what would it look like? I think you'd see a lot of mangrove. Okay. You wouldn't see a whole lot of water. You'd see a lot of very hard work by volunteers done on the weekends trying to restore those fish ponds in Heia. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, you know, question. So we're talking about the bioeconomy. By the way, is that your term? Bioeconomy? It is not. Carl? It's not my term. No. Okay, just checking. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a good term. It's yes. really catchy. So <clears throat> if I talk about the bioeconomy, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm growing something. It, it all assumes I'm growing something, right? Every product that goes into there's biofuel is something that is grown on the land. There's something biologic. Now, the bioeconomy is more than just biofuel. Bioeconomy is food, energy, feed, fiber, you know, value-added products. But it starts with you, you know, growing something it, on the, the land. The, the whiskey being produced on the North Shore, which was presented by another one of our, uh, of our presenters. Yeah, whiskey Can on the North Shore. whiskey in my car? That's a value-added, well, <laughs> it has too much water content, and it would be very, it would be, you might as well burn dollar bills. Okay, but, but going back to it, it, yeah. it always starts growing something on the land. Yes, right? you have something, something that is, involves biological growth. So you're really talking about agriculture. Yes, it's the integration of agriculture into the modern economy. Okay, let me ask you, yeah. let me ask you, Carl, what is the status of agriculture insofar as it is a source for the bioeconomy? What is the status of it now here in Hawaii? Ne? That's a big question that I think you need the Department of Agriculture to answer. Um, I know that, uh, to my understanding and from what I've heard, uh, the Hawaii State Department of Agriculture is actually moving forward at a brisk pace. Uh, headed towards this direction, We're wanting to increase the amount of, of local food produced, wanting to increase the amount of overall land usage, uh, try to bring infrastructure to fa current fallow lands that don't have it. So they're very interested in, across the board, trying to bring the bioeconomy and, and advance it further. Well, th so they see this as a priority. They see it as a priority. And it's also a priority that was given to them by uh, current Governor David Ige when he said he wants to double the amount of local food production. Um, so they're on a path to do that. In that, that case, food means bio, bio food. Well, biofuel food. All lo that stuff. Locally produced. Humans foods. are biofueled organisms. Is yes. another way of looking yeah, at no, it. That's a, and that's very natural. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> very <laughs> naturally so. Okay, so the question yeah. is, you know, the Department of Agriculture wants to see this. We all want to see this. Yes. How does the Department of Agriculture make that happen? What 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 is in the toolcase there? 
Um, once again, they would be the ones to really answer the question, but what, I, what I'm aware of is uh, they, in addition to doing studies, they get together uh, with stakeholders and put projects together. Uh, they have teams of people within the department that work on the development of various aspects of projects in order to come up with the data uh, uh, from the various projects and, and sites that they've been working with in order to try to achieve these goals and present the results so that they can continue to achieve more goals. Were they at the forum? Or so the kinds of things, um, yes, attending. So the Department of Agriculture has a couple of ways to play. One is the Department of Agriculture in Hawaii owns some land. Um, some Class A and B agricultural land and some key areas. Do you know who the biggest land owner, owner in the state is? Do you the know? Federal government, but that's beside the point. I think it's the state. Not you the were asking government. about state you of were, Hawaii. You were asking it about it the. It has uh, enormous tracts of land that could dedicate to this. Yeah, and, and then it's split to public and private. Um, so the Department of Agriculture also has a regulatory role, and so a lot of the staff at the Department of Agriculture has to focus on the regulatory role, which is you know uh, dealing with invasive species and invasive species eradication. Um, well, those are negative. Uh, sort of certifying. Those are, you can't yes. do things. It's hard. We're not going to let you do, do this, yes. that, and the other thing. What about the things it can do to incentivize this priority? That's uh, one of the unfortunate things about Hawaii and the, the underfunding of the Department of Agriculture is, is that um, most of the staff does has to be focused on their regulatory well, responsibilities. If they were properly funded. Yeah. I mean, maybe in my dreams they probably, you know, Well, it was, that was the intent of Hawaii's Barrel dream. Act. The intent of Hawaii's Barrel Act was but to what, provide what more funding. what would they do? If I yeah. gave them a million billion, if they were awash in money, what would they do to uh, incentivize this, the development of biofuel? and the bioeconomy bio in the state, what would they do? What action would they take? The giving land is a good thing. What else? Making land available, working with st various stakeholders and investors to develop various aspects of the bioeconomy. Make deals. Yeah, well, and Broker also, deals. And also help um, there is a gap in Facility. planning and road mapping and facilitation. Like, you know, the, the Department of like the Department of Planning does for real estate development, you know, there are master plans. Um, to decide, you know, where the roads go, what the capacity needs to be, you know, where the schools and the residential and commercial, you know, build out needs to be in certain areas in Hawaii. How does there's, that incentivize? There's no... If you create the master plan that doesn't yeah. currently exist, certainly for a bioeconomy or biofuels or, or anything yeah. in that regard, there are various aspects and various bills that are trying to help that a little bit, but there's no actual master plan mm -hmm. as far right as... Right now there is no bioeconomy master plan? There, there was a study that was written um, uh, in 2010... Called the, the Bioenergy called the bio master, plan. master Plan. Very little of that has been followed up on, and we are far enough removed from it that a new one really needs to be done based yeah. on is the current information. Is there any way of looking at that, dusting it off and saying, hey, some of this has been done, or, you know, at least going back to that bioenergy master plan, because it was a kind of expensive plan to put together. Right. And yeah. it, is it D, under DBED's charge, or who and what? Can be it was DBED's responsibility. That. That's actually one of the things of the trade association that uh, Carl will be talking about. But one of the things we've talked about the trade association raising is the bioenergy master plan could use an update um, mm -hmm. because it is 10 years old. But, and but it's not an, an, it excluded. You don't throw it out. It you don't throw it out. No, you there's go a back lot. to the what, 2010 and try to use it in some yeah, way. Yeah, probably. Um, what it is is a yeah. very good compilation of information, a lot of which is still current. The master plan part actually never got written. So what it is is a bunch of appendices that gather very useful data needed to inform decisions for master planning. But DBED stopped short of an actual. Uh, an actual master plan, which has things like priorities, you know, this, you know, when you have to decide between what can be used on a certain kind of piece of land relative to the rest of the bioeconomy and the and the large economy around it, how do you choose? That's what a good master plan does. Yeah, and but, it, but an incentive yeah. plan will say, come, come hither, you know, mm -hmm. uh, bring me your tired, uh, huddled uh, investors yearning to be free. Uh, <laughs> And, so, and make a business here. You know, build a farm, hire that, that's people. That's another aspect produce. of what needs to be done, and that's another aspect that the trade organization is working on. And that gets, and that's not the Department of Agriculture, although we like their support um, as much as we can get it. But we're talking about trying to advance a legislative agenda to help ah, open it up. Thought you'd get to that. So, Carl, as the executive director of the Hawaii Bioeconomy Trade Association, thank you for being here in that capacity. Um, his hands are physically located 
right now on a list of <laughs> bills <laughs> that the trade association has submitted or caused to be submitted. No, no, or it, no, no, no. That no. The, trade, the trade organization is tracking. We have been involved. Tracking. Pardon We've me. been involved in the creation of, one, of a couple of them, but mostly it's just bills that we are tracking that in one way or another have biofuels or the bioeconomy incorporated into them. Okay. And there's Talk currently 14 bills. Talk I'm not going to go through 14. each and every one okay. of them, but Talk there are currently them. 14 bills that we're tracking. Uh, some of the important ones include uh, Senate Bill 300 or 3077. You guys are taking positions on this, right? Yes, no, yes. or maybe? Yes. yes. Filing yes. testimony on it? Uh, that? With okay. many of these, not all of these will we be submitting testimony on, but we have submitted testimony on several of them, um, including 3077. What that one is suggesting, is a couple of things, very important things. Number one, that we increase the biofuel tax credit. The, what, what, actually, the, biofuel, the, the facility biofuel facility production, production, production tax, tax credit. credit. What is the state of that now? It's currently at three million. We're in, we're at the request it's is to increase it. Of, collectively, collective million? cap of three million. May I say yes. that that's statewide. Not, that's uh, not that, very high. That's not sunflower seeds. It's peanuts. <laughs> very, very much so. <laughs> you heard yes. it here on Think Tech. So we're asking that they be increased. The number that they're increasing it to, or requesting that it be increased to, is three point five million. Okay, we'll take it. We need more. Uh, but that's one aspect. The next as uh, aspect, which is perhaps more important than that, is eliminating the sunset. There's currently a five-year sunset. Um, once, the when, once, when. once the project it's begins, oh, there's five years, and, and, and then if you don't complete the project in the five years, it disappears. You want to talk yeah. about what, what will bring the investors? Eliminating that sunset, because it takes five years just to get through the permitting process at the moment. Yeah, that's terribly unfair. Exactly. So we eliminate that, and now the investors will show up and say, okay, great, we don't have to worry about a sunset. We will invest in this and go through this process. The final aspect of that bill, which is equally important that plays into this, is the creation of a biofuels facilitator within the department, uh, within DBET, uh, the state energy office. Is energy going to stay in DBET? You know? That's a whole separate bill. There, not, is, there is a bill about there is a bill, to track is a bill on what's going to happen yes. with DBET. Because yes. there are some people feel that energy should not be in DBET. Now. Well, I think it's going to stay in DBET. What they're talking about, what, what, what Representative Chris Lee is talking about doing is taking the uh, state energy office and making it the clean energy office and reorganizing it but still keeping it under DBET. So I think okay, it's still going to stay. There. Wherever it goes, you want to go there. Uh, yes, you want to have a special fine. official... We need a facilitator bio, there that is focused official. on, exactly. And, and uh, through some of the conversations that uh, Senator Lorraine Inouye, who is introducing this bill, uh, has had conversations. She's the chair of the Energy Committee. She the is Senate. on the Senate side. Um, she has had conversations with DBET, and they're in agreement with that plan. Hmm. Uh, so maybe it's going somewhere. So hopefully, hopefully we get this facilitator, and this facilitator will work on the permitting aspects, the procurement aspects, um, as well as help facilitate projects. Okay. And that's what we're hoping to achieve. And that bill in itself yeah. will well, can, if it passes, bring about more opportunities for, for the infrastructure well, and the investment we'll bring necessary. A public official who is, who is presumably going to advocate for that. That's exactly. That's what it will bring. Exactly. And, and you hope the right person will be selected. And I do hope the right person will be. And, yeah. I, and I trust that they will. Yeah. Okay. Now, now Joelle, you are the uh, chief instigator. <laughs> oh, instigation officer, pardon me, of the Hawaii Biofuel uh, Trade Association. Um, and uh, I would like to ask you, uh, how much of what Carl has said you agree with? 100%. <laughs> she was whispering. 100% was the answer. You want to add anything? Um, well, there's a couple of things that I can show um, your watchers, you know, that we've uh, tracking as far as big picture market items. So um, that is part of the context behind some of these policy recommendations that the Trade Association is making. But Carl actually runs the Trade Association. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I always knew you were an instigator. <laughs> something we is have in common, called Jay. instigator? Yeah. What is it called? So, so Carl, what does yeah. it look like but, this session? Um, How are these bills doing right now? Are they, are they set for committee hearings? Uh, is it too yes. early to ask that? Where no, are they going? No. Um, all 14 of the bills that we're tracking, and there may be a couple of others, and we're still investigating, but all 14 that we're tracking have been assigned to committees. Not all of them have received a hearing date yet. Many of them have. As I mentioned, we've already submitted testimony. On, on a few of them, and we're looking forward to submitting testimony on others. Mm -hmm. So um, of the ones that we have seen so far, they have all passed, some passed with amendments. We're hoping that some of our recommendations make it into the amendments. Yeah, so it's so an active, working it's on an that. active. It's an year. active process. And what it tells me is that there's more action, am I right about this? There's more action about biofuels and the bioeconomy this year than there has been in the past. More people are interested, more people are involved in the industry, mm -hmm. more people have aspirations about, you know, about being involved and seeing it flourish. I believe uh, that's true. So why is that? Wh why now? Why now? 
it, it's partly a long process. So I, um, I had a working group for nine years that was a public-private initiative called GIFPAC, um, mostly a federal government and national level, but then also with the state of Hawaii component to it. One of the outcomes of that working group was um, the need for there to be a trade association so that the practitioners in the industry, the supply chains, could actually get together and, and you know, make decisions together. You need things like inter island shipping standards. Uh, you need to have some kind of, you know, common policy recommendations rather than a fight every year actually at the legislature. So we need some kind of forum for industry practitioners to get together and, and hash out things like, you know, do we want there to be a biofuel mandate for the state of Hawaii? Um, so there isn't now. And if we do, there isn't we now, but like? there is a bill proposing one again this year. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. And when we come back from this break, we're going to find out exactly okay. what proposal is, what that proposal is, sure. what kind of mandate you want, what yeah. kind of expectation do you have about the development of this part of the energy uh, sector. We'll be right back after this short break. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. What do we do? We've got to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Doug Rawlson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you, to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air crystals, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation, with the local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. Hike. Hike. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hawaii. This, you knew this. That Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Sharon Moriwaki, the co-chair of the Energy Policy Forum and co-host of this show. In fact, the progenitor of this show <laughs> right here with us today. Carl Campagna, the executive director of the relatively new, am I right about this? Yes. Bioeconomy. Hawaii Trade Association, that's Hibeto. Uh, HBDO. Uh, yeah. we, 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 we have small children. Okay. Prefer, and Joelle is an yeah. And Joelle is the Chief Instigating, Instigation Officer, CIO. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to refer to her as the subject matter expert. Of the, that's of the, yeah, uh, that's H B E T O, whatnot. Yeah, okay, and Joelle, you wanted to come back and deal with that question I posed exactly what kind of mandate do you want here? Exactly. So um, it helps to actually sort of talk about Hawaii's energy economy as it exists right now. So one of the pictures that uh, you could bring up is one that actually shows a pie chart of the energy usage in the state of Hawaii. Um, it's, uh, it's titled, um, there we go, Hawaii's Petroleum Use by Mode. Uh, Okay. I'll have to walk you through it. So um, basically what it is here is grouping together the transportation sectors are all in orange. Air transportation is actually the biggest, um, followed by ground transportation, and then followed by marine transportation. And then the green slice is the amount of petroleum that's used uh, in this particular year, 2012, for electricity. Um, how this pie chart is different from some of the others that you might have already had on this show is uh, it did a couple of things. One is um, it actually included imported refined fuel into this pie chart. It's not just what's brought in as crude oil and then refined here and then consumed. There is uh, over a third of the jet fuel consumed in the state of Hawaii is actually imported as that refined jet fuel and it's not tracked in some of the other data that mm -hmm. DVED puts mm -hmm. out. And then um, also the military use is usually reported as its own sector. Um, and what I did is I worked with the Defense Logistics Agency to actually break out the military use into the air, marine, and ground did sectors. Did you tell them you were in the service? They, they know that, Jay. Thank you. <laughs> um, what, what's important yeah. about that pie chart is to recognize that 28% of the focus, 20% of the consumption is for electricity, and we've spent the last decade focused on the Clean Energy Initiative, which I am 100% behind and have always been, but it's 28%. 
of the overall consumption. And the amount of focus, the amount of tax credits, and everything that have gone towards that, which is excellent and, I, and should continue. Look at the fact that 33% of that pie chart is air transportation. Another 28% is ground transportation and then that 8% of marine transportation. When you look at that, you've got near 70% of each barrel that is imported goes towards a transportation. And we, so we should be focusing, and that's entirely what the trade organization, entirely what we're trying to <coughs> advance forward Well, the energy is policy firm is very interested in transportation, and this yeah. is a key feature in transportation. Yeah. So, but let's go back to the question. Uh, unless you have more slides you want to talk about. Yeah, the question well, is, um, what kind of mandate do you want? And so part of the context is, is that what the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative has been doing has been focusing on shrinking that 28% for electricity. So I think if you go to the next picture, okay, next um, picture. this is, you know, this is what happens to a barrel of oil when it comes into Hawaii. This uh, graphic is courtesy of the University of Karachi. They just actually had the nicest pictures. But every barrel of oil has all of these elements in it. The top ends become uh, L liquefied natural gas and then naphtha, which becomes gasoline, uh, lower down a little bit more becomes gasoline, then jet fuel, then diesel fuel. Then you get to lubricating oil, and what the electric utilities use is that bottom, the fuel oil, and then what our you know, road uh, construction, like uh, you know, for uh, real estate development, uses the very bottom, which is the asphalt. Mm -hmm. And so um, every barrel of oil that comes into the state goes through this distillation column and is fractionated into these various okay, fractions. But I want to get to the question of what kind of mandate do you want from the legislature? What you want is a, not a mandate that's going to destabilize that system. So the problem with the mandate right now for 100% renewable electricity by 2045, for example, is that it shrinks the heavy fuel oil, the electricity part of that distillation column. And so the refineries here have a choice to make. They need to reduce all of the products that they make. They either bring in less crude oil and reduce all the products that they make in order to, so tell them to do that. in order to sell less fuel oil. How do you oil, tell them to do that? Which means that more air transportation, which means that more refined fuel product is brought in from elsewhere. So unfortunately, one of the ramifications of the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative, because it's been focused on electricity only, is, is that the state is actually importing more fossil fuel than it was before, because it has not no, addressed no demand. And <laughs> exporting, and the heavy fuel oil is still being consumed in the globe. It's being just it's being an exported. Economics question, though, it's, it's an economics question. It's an economics question. So way. if you go to the next picture, we've actually got some data to show that. Um, Next picture. Uh, it's coming. I feel it. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, might Yeah. So zoom out a little. So this is what the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative has achieved. Yeah, I'm sure you've talked about this on the show several times. Is that fossil fuel generation, which is the big gray wedge, is going down. Mm -hmm. So as that petroleum use has gone down, Hawaii's imports of jet fuel, for example, have gone up. And so, which is the next picture? That's some data to show you. Okay. You got another picture. Okay. Yep. Yep. So um, this is, you know, over a five-year period, which is um, uh, the most recent period that DBED reports, the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. So it's going up. Jet fuel demand. So basically, you know, the Hawaii's economy. Jet fuel importation jet, is going up. Jet fuel so demand is going up. Yeah. Overall demand is going up, yeah. and imports are going up. Yeah, yeah. They're both going up. Okay. So what are you going to do about this? Well, what you can do about it is focusing on a more holistic. How? Set set of mandates. I mean, I wouldn't send a message to the, uh, the legislature asking them to find something holistic. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't work. Well, they can do something fairly simple, like instead of having a state mandate, the, a lot of them don't even know that Hawaii has opted into the federal renewable fuel mandate. And the federal renewable fuel mandate is more holistic. It's not focused on just one sector like electricity or just one sector like ground well, transportation. What is a holistic mandate in this context? The, the entire pie chart. Yeah. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, I mean, what I'm really getting at is how do you do that? How do you achieve, you know, a better result? How do you achieve the, the goals you have for the bioeconomy? First of all... What, what foot do you put out, put out first? What foot do you ask? 
I mean, you're not going to have a lot of changes federally here. You guys cannot do that. Even if you right. know the people, you still can't do that. Right. But you maybe you can have some influence in the legislature and the governor. Right. Uh, this one or next one. And you can, you know, ask them for something. And hopefully that will leverage you into a better position for this industry or for your trade association. But what is it that you're going to ask? Well, uh, the first thing is what Joel just said is very important, that we already recognize that we have already tied into the federal mandate and what that means and make sure that we've under... What does it mean to the military here? That's a federal agency. What does it well, mean? It's not about the federal agency. It's about the state tying into the federal mandate and then what that is going to mean from a holistic by, perspective. Is the state of Hawaii bound by the federal mandate? The state has already opted into it and the state's petroleum refiners and markers, marketers have been complying with it for 10 years. Most policymakers and even clean energy enthusiasts in the state of Hawaii don't know that because the focus has been on electricity, which is... On the mainland, petroleum is not used for electricity generation. It's really only Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, the places where you, you're not connected to the lower 48 states that, sh that you have petroleum used for electricity generation. Okay, but so you guys... So, but but to the short answer to your question is what, we, um, what could be asked for is there's a lot the state could do to help reduce the cost of actually producing renewable fuels that address this entire pie chart. Exactly. So yeah. what I did last year, yeah. what I was able to get done last year, is I wrote a resolution last year that was called the Hawaii Green Fuels Initiative. And that resolution was introduced by Senator Lorena Noye. It passed through and, and was passed by the legislature unamended. It was calling for essentially the fuels, total holistic, but fuels uh, 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 perspective uh, or direction similar to the clean energy initiative which was focused on electricity so let's take the electricity the clean energy initiative and let's make it a fuels initiative so that we're addressing air marine and ground transportation yeah. and every other aspect yeah. as well as electricity. that pat as well as electricity yeah. so that passed unanimously so great so that was the first step the next step is now taking that from the resolution and starting to have bills that support that for example for example, bill. Senate, Senate Bill 3077. Which does what? Which, which is what I'd already mentioned. It increases the overall tax credit, it eliminates the okay. sunset, so and creates the facilitator. All right, so it's a thousand ways to nip and tuck this thing and exactly. to, and to it change would be great. the way the industry works. Correct. But it would be I, great I if I could make one bill that did the exact same thing that the Clean Energy Initiative did, but that's a huge undertaking. So instead yeah. of doing one huge undertaking, let's nip and tuck it's and get our way there. It's complex. Yeah. Energy has become... Isn't that right, Sharon? From the time yeah. we started following it, become huge and complex. Yes. This is only one area of a, such a complex landscape, honestly, yeah. with all kinds of variables and permutation and commutation. So the question I, I put to you, and this is the last question, and I'm asking you both, and I'm asking you whether you agree with each other. I think you probably do. Uh, is is going forward? You know, we have to, you have to educate the public and the legislature on your slice of the pie and your bioeconomy. You have to make them exquisitely familiar, exquisitely aware of the need to focus on this and be holistic about it and on change the numbers, change the consumption, change the importation of fuels that could be replaced by biofuel. Okay? Yeah. So <clears throat> we're going to take a moment and we're going to make them more aware. Who wants to go first? There's camera one. That's the public. The legislature is included, Joel, plus the governor. They're all there listening, waiting. What do you got to say? Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Um, I think there's a couple of uh, first you can start by yeah, settle minute, by first we can start by settling some myths first there isn't a competition between food and fuel it's a it's a common myth it's it's kind of an impo an imported notion from the mainland anyway um, what part of the reason why we had the event on January 16th which included half a day of legislative briefings and then half a day of workshops was to illustrate all the ways that you have integrated food and fuel and energy and value-added products. You can't do one without the other. There's no such thing as a pure play biofuels project. It's always part of a greater whole. But, and so that's the value of an integrated system. It's also the complexity of an integrated system. They're harder to do. And Hawaii is not necessarily the easiest place to do business. And now we're trying to do something hard in a place that's hard to do. So it actually, um, what does work well is when you have locally relevant, locally informed, stakeholder developed, ground up projects. 
And so that's part of the reason why we were showcasing the kinds of projects I talked about earlier. In Carl, show. what would you leave, what, you know, if there's somebody out there trying to get a message here, what message would you leave that person with? Do you want him to rem or her to remember and walk down the block thinking about? Uh, that a bioeconomy, a fully advanced and developed bioeconomy in Hawaii will bring jobs, will bring education opportunities, will create more opportunities to keep our children here in long-term sustainable jobs. Sharon, it's time for you to wrap up and <laughs> say goodbye. Well, I, I really would like to thank Joelle and Carl for just starting the conversation again. It started, as you say, in 2010 with the Bioenergy Master Plan that isn't a master plan. So um, I look forward to seeing what happens at the legislature, to have you come back, to see what's next steps. But I think it's really important to have a facilitator. If you don't have a champion, things don't get done. So right. fight on. Thank, Thank you, you Joel. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. It'll be great to have you here. I hope you come back and tell us more as the, as the, as the legis legislative session unfolds. Great. Thank you for having Thank us you. on the show, Jay. Aloha.